Welcome into the number one group of five football podcast in the world. This is the group of five guys. Our mission, our goal is to be the hype, be the excitement and pride of the group of five football programs that the mainstream sports media absolutely refuses to do. We need your help to do that. You can follow us on all the social media platforms at group of five guys. Go to YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your best podcasts. Like, subscribe, give a five-star rating and review, and share it with your family and friends. Or you can go to groupoffiveguys.com and get some Group of Five Guys swag. Tonight, this episode of Inside Drill, we've got UAB secondary coach and special teams coordinator Kenneth Gilstrap, great friend of ours. Enjoy the show. Have you had it from somebody born and raised in Lafayette, Louisiana, in Louisiana, at a tailgate? Doubt it. Lee Corsa is a guy who had a retirement party 10 years ago, and yet he still won't leave the office. Projected getting drafted between the first and third round. Like, that's incredible. That's like, the, that's like yeah, the wide receivers are absolutely stacked for the group of five. He said, Michael Pratt has got to show up and play. And boy, did he. 394 yards, four touchdowns, 48 rushing yards on the ground, and another touchdown. Yeah, I really appreciate you do for the group of five programs, and I think it's great. I think we should be get more of this. But you guys are in the the, the forefront of this, and so I'm, I'm thankful for this. I'm glad that you're talking about the group of five because I think they get overlooked. But it's a ton of fun to watch a guy go to the NFL from a, a Nevada or a Colorado State or a Middle Tennessee or an App State. You know. And fans follow that kid. I appreciate what you guys do, truthfully, um, covering the group of five. Uh, I mean, y'all said it earlier, but the Sun Belt to me is college football. We want to welcome in a real friend of all of ours on the group of five guys. A guy that we all had the pleasure of being in the locker room with, playing with. I think I had a couple of classes with the guy. Current special teams coordinator and secondary coach at UAB. Guy was a three-year starter at Middle Tennessee at corner. Guy ran track at Middle, all-conference track guy. So you want to talk about everybody talks about track speed. This guy's got it, or at least used to have it. Okay. The last two years at Middle, coached two of the top five secondaries in the country as far as turnovers go. Looking to do that at UAB this year with a whole new staff. Kenneth Gilstrap, my man. Welcome to the group of five guys, brother. Hey, man. Strap. How you doing? <laughs> I am a group of five guy. Through and through. That's right. Yeah, man. Through and through. Strap, I got to tell you this before we get started. I know you're not at middle anymore, but two or three years ago on the sideline at FAU, you gave my nephew a hat and a t-shirt. <laughs> Way too Most big for the kid, but he <laughs> loves it. And because of that, he has become like a real football fan. Middle Tennessee fan, college football okay. fan. So I appreciate you doing that. I've been trying no to problem, man. trying to no get problem. these guys to, you know, root for the right kind of school. So you help me with that. <laughs> Most but, definitely. But you're in summer, man. First year at UAB, new staff. I can see it in the background. You got the indoor. I got, it looks like some guys running around back there. Yeah, man, they working, man. Beautiful facility. Beautiful facility. So so UAB going into a new conference. Brand new staff, brand new, you know, Division One head coach and Trent Dilfer. What's the expectation? What's it been like? What's been different for you uh, than your previous stops? What are you guys looking to do this year in 2023? Um, culturally, it's completely different, man. It's a, a, a standard of excellence that I'm, I'm really excited about. Um, and I had the same standard at middle. Uh, but a lot, it's just a little different um, from a standpoint of culturally. You know, Coach Dilfer. They coach high school football, but he's seen a lot of he's seen a lot of football. So um, uh, from an educational standpoint, you're le learning more football than you ever learned, seeing more things that you ever seen because of his broad his broad uh, space in his head because he's so knowledgeable from the quarterback standpoint, from a schematic standpoint, and his vision. Um, so that's been real real fun for me because you know I was at middle with Coach Stock. You know it was more traditional. Like I knew I knew what was going on. Well, now I don't know anything that's going on. Like, we're learning everything. We kind of learn on the job sometimes, and it's, it's kind of cool. It's, it's fun. Um, and it was fun with Coach Stockstill as well. Uh, but 
Uh, so that's that's kind of the new new deal for me. Just learning this new space, learning how we're going how we're going to eat breakfast at, in camp, or how we're going what's period one going to be like at practice. So that's kind of new new for me and kind of cool because I never really had that that experience in a really long time in the profession. Yeah, because you probably had the same schedule from right. 2008 until 2020. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, so. it's probably it's probably 75 percent chance I can tell you what's going on. Right <laughs> uh, then, so I was at FAMU with Coach Simmons, and that was the same exact uh, kind of background format being with him. Uh, so that's kind of it. Was, that's kind of cool for me um, because one thing I I've, I have learned from removing myself from Coach Stock still in the middle of Tennessee that like Coach Stock does he's so organized and so knowledgeable of being the head coach like he takes so much stress off the coaches you know because he knows all right this this and this he's been assistant so long now you've been the head coach for so long it's kind of like easy going like it's, it's smooth it is makes that, it really easy on assistants is that where uh coach dilfer is that where that relationship happened when he was because he was coaching high school ball in middle tennessee right actually so. i'm gonna tell you coach dilfer didn't know we didn't know each other at all I still kind of don't even know the true story, how he found me, how we found each other. Um, so I really took a leap of faith, prayed about it, and, uh, and came to UAB. Well, there's no doubt that, that UAB got one of the best up-and-coming secondary coaches in the country. So, you know, I know you've been you know been there all summer. What's the, what's the secondary look like? What's the defense kind of going to look like down at UAB? It's got to be different than last year, right? Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, schematically, it'll be different from last year. Last year they were really, really talented. Um, crazy story. When I left that game, I was like, man, like they were physical. They were really talented. Like, you know, that was that was a good ball team. Like I thought, honestly, thought last year they had an opportunity. Uh, I could I could see them winning the conference title because uh, they just were very physically physical. They were fast. Uh, they were big. So uh, this year it become you know you got some of the same guys back, but from a secondary standpoint. Um, I really decided to work with this new bunch of guys. Um, we got some vets and we got some young talent coming in. So uh, from a standpoint, Paris in the middle is different. Uh, I think we're probably a little longer in the middle, but we may be a little more fast and twitchier here. Um, uh, but uh, we lost one of our best guys, you know, lost to a portal. Uh, so that, that took a shift in our dynamics. But we got a lot of tools to move around here. Um, it won't be more traditional, as you can see some secondaries. We have one guy sitting one position. I like to cross train these guys, so you'll see a lot of guys playing multiple positions, and I think that that adds value to the kids and it adds value to their knowledge of the of the scheme. Whereas some schemes, ninety percent of the time, the kid gonna sit at corner and play corner. Um, I think this year with these guys being so knowledgeable, being so smart, they have the opportunity to play dime in this package, play nickel in this package, play free safety in this package, and now they create depth. Um, throughout the season, um, they have the ability to move pieces around. Because I feel like defensive football is changing. It's kind of like basketball. For instance, like your best corner might have to play nickel this week or your best safety may need to play strong this week because you're about to play a, a long tight end. Then you have to have the ability to move pieces around, and you'll see that from our scheme defensively. I don't think you're going to be able to game plan, plan us and say, are they going to sit in quarters this week every, every play? Are they going to play – one high versus this every week. I think you'll see a, a different variation of things based off of what the offense gives us. Well, I know from a quarterback standpoint, when you got guys that are that, that can play multiple positions, it just makes it that much more difficult to dissect what they are pre-snap and then now post-snap guys are moving around. So that's going to be awesome to watch that you guys are going to be able be so versatile and can move pieces around like that. Right. You, well, you, you better be because moving into the American <laughs> – Oh, yeah. still got, you still got UTSA. Of course, they come right. with you. Right. Uh, luckily, you get to get away from Western Kentucky, but you're yeah. in Tulane, hey, you're getting SMU. You... That, like, we play, like, honestly, like, you know, they, they do a phenomenal job of offense, so I commend what Coach Hilton does there. But last two years, middle probably, we probably played them the best on defense probably last two years. Yeah. And it's like, man, like, they're, like, they're so explosive and fast. Like, and it's, it's simple, but it's little tweaks here and there where you can tell they just sit in a box like trying to see how you're playing this, and they just – it's what it's, it's real innovative. Strap, so from your playing days to your coaching days, so you've been around. We had middle as one of the DBUs of the group right. of five. So you're coming up, you're a young guy. 
you're playing, you know, you got Rod Isaac, you got Jeremy Kellum, um, you know, you got Suber there, and then you're playing, you got you and Sammy, and then you're right. the vet, and you got Kevin Byard coming up, and right. then you're on the coaching staff, and now you get Reed Blankenship, you get Shavaris Ward, and you get some of these guys. So give us something, like, what do you take? You know, you're cross-training these guys like you mentioned. So do you take a little piece from all those guys as you actually, go to coach your guys now? Yeah, so actually I try to find those common traits in some of those guys because I'll be the first to say, like, besides, like, when I got to middle, uh, we, you know, that was stock. He won five games back-to-back. -back. So, like, Alex Suber and Rod Isaac set the standard. Like, those guys set that standard for middle DBs in the stock era. And I can honestly say that. And then, like, kind of when those guys left, we kind of took a lump. And then, you know, me and Sammy and the group of guys I had, we kind of kept it going. But then after that, it just rolled. Like, Coach Ellis kind of was, you know, he was kind of the backbone to him and Coach Bobby. Um, after that, like, after my class left, they rolled for forever, however long, you know. They're still rolling. Like, the guys they got there, they're, like, if there was no transfer portal, like, do you honestly know what that room at middle would look like right now? From Quincy Riley to Corey and Patterson, like, those Same. guys don't leave. And they got guys there now, like, I'm excited to see them play this year, like, get rolled, man. So, honestly, like, honestly, Coach Ellis did a good job. Uh, he did a good job of teaching me, like, all right, these are the traits, you know. I watched Coach Ellis mess up on some recruits. Or I watched myself mess up on some recruits. So, now it was like, all right, we had a certain pedigree to find in DBs. I have a certain pedigree I look for. Or I can see, like, I can see, like, I, I'd be the first person to tell you. I wasn't excited when we signed Chavez Ward. But Coach Ellis taught me when I was a graduate assistant, being a young coach. Hey, look, look at these traits this guy has. He's gonna be a pro. Like Coach Ellis said, it day one, it's gonna be one of the best corners ever come out of here. And like I was like, come on, man, yeah, right. I wanted another kid that ended up being really good, also. But Coach Ellis was gonna hold like I'm telling y'all, Ward's gonna be a good player. And I got the opportunity to be groomed as a DB coach. Him and Coach Nick said, look at these traits in this guy. Look, look at his measurables. Look at how he handles this, he's going to end up being a good player. So I kind of got spoiled, man. Like I tell people from a coaching standpoint, like, man, I got I got grinded as a GA. I got grinded as a student coach with Coach Ellis, Coach Nix, Coach Bobby, Coach Stock, Coach West. They were hard on me. But it gave me opportunity to get groomed and developed. And now me being at UAB, I get to see, like, man, there's some moments where I hate it. I hate going to work every day. Now, you might not see me, but it gave me the opportunity to see get developed as a coach, man. I'm, like – I appreciate Coach Stop, Coach Nix, Coach Ellis, Coach Bobby, Coach West, those guys, Coach Schaefer. Like, being with Schaefer, like, Schaefer coached countless amount of NFL DBs. So, now, I'll be honest, like, sometimes I may get a little arrogant when it comes to recruiting DBs because I feel like, man, I got groomed the right way, the yeah. old school way. Like, well, you got to earn it every day. So, who – so, all right, I'm going to put you on the spot, Strap. So, who in that DB room at UAB – are you? Do you already see some of those traits that you say this guy's a pro or this guy's going to be an all conference guy? I'm gonna make a statement. I probably shouldn't make. Um, I coach kid right now. Mac McWilliams is, uh, he's he has traits that I didn't have. Like he's a, he's me. Like he gonna stick glue stick to it. Like you know, I know what I was as a player. He gonna stick to a receiver, small guy. But I'm talking about fast. Gonna play hard. Play in the slot. Play on the outside. He gonna talk that junk all day. You know, you know, like you, I yeah. was like, so I really, I really, really enjoyed coaching that kid. Like, I think he's slept on. I don't think no doubts so in my mind. He's an NFL player. Um, and me, me tuning him up. I'm going to coach him even harder. But that guy, I think that guy, like you put him in any DB room I've ever been in. He's going to stick out like a sore thumb. He's special. Um, he's one guy. And then, uh, you know, we got some young guys that I'm really excited about. But the guys that like bonafide, I can say, um, him and then Keandre Swoops uh, is another guy. He's a six-year senior. Uh, very, very smart. Kind of gives you those jelly, Jeremy Kellum vibes. Like, he's going to sit right there and say, hey, coach. Like, I'm not the coach that, you know, don't tell you shut up. I want you to sit right, hey, let's, why are we not doing this? So he's going to give you that vibe of like, hey, coach, let's do this. Let's do that. Um, so those two guys are the guys that really stick out to me. I got a lot of good guys here. This the UAB DB room is, is different, man. It's like, uh, so middle, it was kind of like, uh, how can I say this? Like, tell you guys, middle, it was kind of like, we had, a, when you lost, when you lost Alex Uber, you tried to get another one, and Kari Burke. 
<laughs> like if you lost Kenneth Gilstrap, you try to go get another Kenneth Gilstrap. Like that's kind of was our formula. If you lost Ward, you go get Jeremy Country, who was probably arguably the best one. You know, um, you try to go get another. We had a formula. Like you know, like I can tell you right now, Deontay Stanley in Middle Tennessee. You know, he's supposed to follow Travis Ward more mode. So we had a mode like here. It's kind of like now I got all these different pieces and I yeah. get to create my own, my own like my own piece of artwork. That's how I see a DB room. I get to create my own piece of artwork. And you got guys like Kobe Dempsey who's gonna be five eight, one hundred and seventy pounds, but straight. I'm talking about a dog. Like they may be a kid we never would have signed in the middle because we went and got the long guy, or yeah. you know, or you know, are we gonna go? Are you gonna look at like the twins, Dame, Damian Miller and Demon Miller? Like those two guys are gonna be the old school. Knock you, knock your ass out, type safeties. You know, like so. I'm kind of, I'm intrigued. I'm, um, we got another piece coming soon. Like, but uh, I'm kind of excited to see how this was gonna work out because that middle, I kind of was spoiled. Like, I had, I was there for four years. When I got the middle, half of those guys helped recruit, so I knew if they could play or not play or what they could bring to the table. And I got to kind of build on something I had already helped build. Where here is like, I don't know these guys. All right, let's see what's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt you got the eye for the talent and, and, and the guys that have progressed to the NFL from Middle Tennessee. You had a huge, huge hand in it without question. And we mentioned the transfer portal a little bit. I'd love to get your take just on college football in general and with the transfer portal going on. Do you like it? Do you not like it? You know, what's kind of been your experience as a coach so far with it? Um, Honestly, man, like. I don't. Uh, if anybody knows me, I've lost probably some of the top transfers these past few years. Lost one at UAB this spring. I had a really great relationship with that kid. I'm so excited for him. I was happy for that kid. Uh, you know, it was bittersweet, but um, but to me, I respect the business aspect of it. You know, you're saying you're telling yourself, you telling yourself a coach can up and leave, can a kid up and leave. But I do feel like it has to be some rules and regulations to it. Yeah. Has to be some bylaws to it. Right now, you're telling, we're telling. There's no that we're we're messing up the model of uh the kids. Now I'm not talking about I don't care about if a kid can up and leave. I'm not talking about the business of my level. I'm talking about think about this. You got a kid that has 70 credits and then he transfers to this power five school. He loses those credits. He came to school to be an engineer and now he's just going to get a general education degree. Yeah. When like is it about academics? You know, is it about him getting his degree? Uh, for instance, I had a kid, you know, last year. Two years ago, I lost. He's supposed to go get a fashion degree. Now you're going to this school. You're not. That's that's what you were. That's what you're supposed to do, man. I want to see you follow through with that because you don't. Even if you play 15 years in the NFL, you're only that's you got another half of your life to live. Yeah. You know. Um. So I think that aspect uh, of it. Um. Uh, that's that's the only thing I wish would get right. Um. But I'm all for man. Go get that money, dog. They getting paid. They feel like it's the best situation for them. More power to you, man. Like uh, I'm all about seeing young men go get paid and and, and monetize uh, the blessings God gave them. So that really doesn't bother me as much because I feel like it's a lot of good football players out, out here. You can go find football players, but I do think it has to be some bylaws. And for the group of five schools, you can't create this hierarchy in, in athletics where you, you kind of handicap the schools that don't have some of the top resources. Uh -huh. Yeah. You kind of, you kind of. That's like saying if the NFC West is going to be have these, they have these bylaws because they got these resources, and the NFC South have these resources, AFC have these resources. You have to give yourself an even playing field so that every college football program has the opportunity to chase the national championship. Yeah, if I'm not in the SEC, I don't get that sixty, seventy million dollar TV deal. But you still give, you try to even the playing field out that every school has an opportunity to earn the right to be the best as they can be because you can't fault a kid. You can't fault a kid with moms on welfare or you can't fault a kid who wants to play the highest level of football and he can change his financial situation or going to do something where he thinks is the best business decision for him. You can't fault him on that. Yeah. But you can't fault a grown man and uh, people of power who never played the game of football <laughs> on not creating a level playing field, like creating the best situation for a young man or woman to go out there and get their degree. You know, that's why I think we're getting away from it. It, it kind of, it hurts me sometimes where I see kids, I've seen kids leave schools and not even be eligible. That's crazy. Or I've seen, I've seen coaches 
I think coaches throw kids away knowing when the kid may, you know, throw kids away. Like it's not the where's the development mental piece of it, you know? Um, that's that's the only thing that, that gets me that I, I see um that can hurt some of these kids. That's true. Hey, they, they, they go, hey, they gonna go get that money, dog. Go get the money. You know, I ain't gonna, I ain't hating on them. I ain't mad. I'm not saying I would have did it, but when we can go out there and make six six figures and you make a twenty thousand over there, your mama can't eat and stuff like that, or you don't got a car. You gotta respect that. Like that's about being a man, about providing. That's that's what God put us here for. Yeah, that's what they want, Strap. Uh, that's that's what the the people that you said never played that are just in position yeah. of power. That's what they want. They don't want UAB to have yeah. a chance. Right, and, and they uh, if, honestly, from a business model standpoint of it, if and I think the college football program uh, playoff might bring that. You know, uh, they create if if if. If it's a way for two group of five schools to get in there, I think it can be some kind of balance where if they get monetized, right, where you'll see more kind of court, a little bit of balance. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. just think of, like, Boise would have got in there three years back to back. Yep. When Back in the 06, 05, when they had their – whatever time it was when they had their run. You know, the TCUs, when they – before they was power five, when they had their run. I think if they can do that, it create, it'll create some type of balance, you know? Yeah. Um. So, you know – about the portal dilfer has been one of the more vocal guys of course he went oh, yeah. viral he went viral on that podcast the one time you know yeah. saying he was going to call everybody out does he preach that to you guys too um you know it's really uh, been dilfer and then trailer at utsa it said something today i saw and so yeah, I uh, think, you know, what are they what are they preaching in the staff meeting i think dilfer just how he carries himself goes dilfer um and that was one thing i thrived off in my interview he just has that competitive nature like it's us against the world. I don't, I'm not worried about this. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about UAB. If it's not in the best interest of UAB, that's all I care about. Um, so I think i seen, like, once we lost a particular athlete, i seen a different change of energy with Coach Dilfer. Because, you know, Coach Dilfer's learning the college game, you know. So when he really learned, like, what's really going on, like, I think it really sparked, like, that fire in him, like, nah, like, you ain't coming after my guys. Like, you're not going to do this because, you know, everybody knows what goes on in college football. But I think he just had it's, – it's not more of him worrying about other schools and them coming after this guy. I think Coach Dilfer wakes up and breathes comp- competitiveness. Like, you can't tell Coach Dilfer he's not going to win throwing the, the paper in the trash can. Like, he just has a natural competitiveness. Uh, and, you know, I'm kind of the same way. Like, I'm going to compete. I'm going to talk smack every day of the week and – and we gonna we gonna go at it. Like I think that's just Coach Dilfer as a man. That's why he's been successful in everything he's done. Yeah. Well, so how's that, the how's the the offense gonna look down there at UAB? I assume he's gonna have a huge a huge role in uh, what they're running. I would assume, right? Four verts all game, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, schematically, uh, you know, probably you know, I can't go into detail, but I can tell you yeah, um, for sure. from, a from a standpoint of like, I'm gonna say this: if my son played the quarterback position. I want to play at UAB just from yeah. the standpoint. My son played offensive line. Like, my son wanted to learn how to play football. I mean, I'm not talking about hickory dickory dock. I ain't talking about trick him, trick him football. I'm talking about if you want to learn how to play football the right way uh, from a standpoint of, like, schemes, schematics, how to play, how to learn, how to step with the right foot and do those things, I think that's what you're going to get. You're going to get fundamental football. You're going to get – uh, old school approach, and um, you're gonna get a real mental aspect of football. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be just trying to trick you. It's gonna yeah. be like, now we're gonna we're gonna line up, and we're gonna try to be smarter on this play. We're gonna try to be tougher on this play. We're not just gonna try to trick you and just stick to our guns. We're gonna do it this way, and that's all you know. I can tell you, you're not gonna get that. You're not gonna get that. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Strap. I want to switch gears off of football for the most part. Um, so you wrote a book a couple years ago. Yeah, I did. And t- t- tell us about it. <laughs> plug it. Where can people buy it? Well, you know, what's it about? Who's it for? Uh, tell us about um, your book, man. So, man, I always wanted to write a book. I'm really uh just deep down inside of me. Like, I kind of opened up more about it. I'm really into like music and well, Murphy. No, we used to talk about music all the yeah, time. Yeah, all the time. But I'm like, I'm uh, I'm into music. I'm into like books. I'm into like art. Like, I like. I'm into a creative space. So, honestly, when I'm away from football or like when we on road trips or things like that. I like to visualize. I like to write. Um, and honestly, I was at a Division two school in Arkansas, bored out of my mind. Uh, 
And uh, the season was about uh, season wasn't started, and like I would work on. So in the mornings we work out with the players five. Then I kind of got tired of playing video games. I was like, man, there's something else I can be doing. And I always wanted to write a book, so I ended up writing a, uh, a fictional novel um, called The Boy from the Swamp. Um, it's not a true story, but it has some true stories in it, or based off some true some some situations I've been in or seen others be in. Um, and it, it's kind of just a motivational piece that uh young kids can uh read um it's a love story in there it's a story about a young boy overcoming adversity and it's kind of a tool to teach about life and how to handle different situations um and honestly like uh where i'm from man kids don't read you know just be honest like where i'm from i'm from metro atlanta um from the east side of atlanta man like we didn't we didn't really enjoy reading we didn't really have much for us to read you know our stories you know besides killing mockingbird other than that we didn't really want to read nothing else in school you know um, and my teacher, I had a teacher, my seventh grade English teacher, Ms. Butler. She read a story to us um, called Forged by Fire. And I was like, man, I want to write a story like that. And that motivated me to write a story, um, a fictional novel. And uh, you can get it at KennethGillstrap.com or you can go on my social media um, at KennethGillstrap. But, man, uh, like I, I continue to write. I got a lot of different pieces I want to work on, um, stuff I want to do outside of football. Because I honestly – and I, I – and, and, and Murphy Sprouse, I honestly do it for the players because, um, like I told those guys, and I released the book during COVID because I finally had time to really focus on it. Um, so I really, like I told my players, I say this ain't nothing me trying to be cool or be famous. I want you guys to see a young man, you know, really, like y'all see somebody like, I wasn't the smartest guy, you know. I was a guy that didn't want to go. I, I, I wasn't the smartest guy. I ain't do everything right. Y'all know me. I was at the party every weekend on Saturday, you know. <laughs> but I want y'all to see, like, somebody do something outside of football and balance, like, other stuff outside of this game, man. Yeah. Um, because where I'm from, so many kids, man, they just – y'all already know it's wicked jump shot or, or the streets. So I, I wanted to show them something different. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I still write. I got some other stuff I'm working on, but kind of, you know, I've been locked in lately. You know, I had my son and then – new job but i got other stuff i work on that's kind of my my space away like when i'm on a plane or if i'm out recruiting i'm up late at night that's stuff i can do to take my mind off football i love it man yeah not, the boy not, from not, the swamp we'll yes, plug that, you gotta plug that on the socials i might i might get me a copy tonight strap i'm not gonna yeah. lie i saw i've been seeing it and i just never bought oh, it yeah. i'm one of those guys yeah, i kind of I kinda calm down a little bit with the promotion i gotta do better job put a team around me and learn i'm learning like only i'm learning like so really, it was just really like something for me to do. Like I needed to do it because, you know, you know, like I'm just one of those people. Like if I wake up and say I'm gonna do something, I gotta get it done. I'm gonna beat myself up about it. Yeah, I said, bro, I stayed on it for like two years. It was done. Like I just would never put it out. Yeah, like that's the crazy part. Never not, put it out. Not, not only is the next big up and coming defensive coach, he's a father. <laughs> he's an, an author. <laughs> he's an author. Nah. I mean, hey, what, hey, is, no, strap, is there anything is, you don't do? <laughs> nah, man, I actually was gonna put it out like I was gonna put it out as a, like somebody else's name because I, I didn't want it to it. overshadow what I had going on as a coach, man. Because you know, no. but that was just some of the insecurities I had. I thought, man, man, somebody might, might not hire me because I wrote a book. They don't think I ain't focused or something. You, nah. Your players are gonna make fun of you in the meetings and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I get it. Trust you know, this, man. This, so this, our analyst, we got an analyst here. He came. Like, nobody knew I wrote a book at UAB, and I guess he looked on my social media. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> He bought a book and was walking around the uh, office with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, oh, that's awesome. Well, so you got so you got your kid. You know, we talk any coach that's got kids, and now you yeah. you you're taking the new job. Kid, you said before the show he's one. Yeah, so he's one. He's about to turn two in two weeks. Wait, two wait, three wait. Weeks, yeah. when's his birthday? Yeah. August six. Oh, how about that? My kid's birthday is August fourth. He'll be three. Okay, you're Leo, man. Yeah, uh -oh. How about that? My kid's flat-footed, kind of knock-kneed. He's going to be a lineman for sure. <laughs> Poor guy doesn't know it yet. He likes to throw out. He's throwing the football around in the yard. I'm like, I got we'll news him, for you, we'll pal. Get him right. we'll get you don't him need right. one of those. Yeah, Your kid's going to have track speed. Probably <laughs> running the hurdles, my kid's going to be throwing shot put. Maybe discus <laughs> if he's if he's sort of talented. But uh, so how often do you – is he around the office? Is he around practices at all? You let him do yeah, that? Or? So, yeah, man. So – um He's actually like so. It, Coach Dilfer, I'm gonna be honest, man. Coach Dilfer, I've been honest. I've been grateful to work with two head coaches who didn't mind my son being around. Like, or like I, I've had situations where my son, like, 
my son will be with me and um say like a babysitter or something cancels or show up late i'll be in the staff meeting with my son like he'll be laying on my chest or hmm. i don't have situations in the spring where my son will be in the meetings with me he'll be in the back of the meeting running around the meeting my players just laugh going so I, coach stock did a phenomenal job and coach dilford actually let my son be around all the time man that's awesome. So I always had a vision of my son growing up in the locker room, you know, because I think it's benefits to him being around me. Like, that's kind of why I had so much success as a young coach because I'm not that old and got to be around older coaches because I grew up I grew up around the game. Like, I grew up in the car, in the car, in the middle seat with my dad's players. I grew up in the locker room with my dad's players, or you know. So I kind of wanted to have the aspect of just being around me. More, it's, it's deeper than the game. Um, but Absolutely. I can tell you, like, he already – my son's already like he already like involved. Like he throw the ball already. T- like his second word was touchdown. So like I'm not gonna put press on him, but I'm pretty sure he got it in his blood already. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt yeah. about that. No pressure, yeah. kid. But your dad's the defensive coordinator <laughs> at UAB. You know, twenty whatever that is, twenty thirty five. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you know, but nah, he man, he he's always like he's around. Like I got if I open my my desk, his toys, like he's around. Uh, like so we are, I got two athletic trainers, the girls on the staff, they do it for night. If we're like meeting at night, they watch them for me in my office. I like to allow them to do homework in my office. Like so at UAB, man, we just gotta we got we're building a culture, like a kind of family culture. Like Coach Dilfer, like, man, he he allowed my son to be around. Coach Sioni, the defense coordinator. Like I don't perfect example, the, the, the damn middle school, damn uh damn school called and um Council school one day, like in the middle of the day. So he sat in the deepest staff meeting and Coach Sione just let him sit in there. And he just fell asleep. He was in the meeting. And uh, our staff do a phenomenal job, man. I appreciate them for that, man. Me, you know, because, you know, being a parent, you know, something can change at any moment. And in this yeah. profession, it's hard, man. Uh, it's hard, you know, because you're so time consuming and spare yeah. the moment. Could, couldn't imagine, but we couldn't be prouder of you, Strap. And no we know question. you're going to continue to do man. Great things and man, I can't wait. I can't wait wait to watch those DBs at UAB this year. Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I'm excited, man. Those guys, man, they working, they working really hard this summer. Uh, our strength, our strength staff is really, really good, man. Uh, it's one of the best I've been around. Uh, but he's well, doing that, Coach Lyle doing a phenomenal job with those guys. But that weight room, I mean, Sprouse. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's like it's like Disney. The places are like Disney World, Jeff. It's incredible. Like, like they got yeah, everything, you know, color coded, and I, I mean, it's yeah, man. If, if my family's not in town, bro, I can I stay up here all night. Like, I'm watching Yellowstone now, so I I turn on Yellowstone and just keep working. Look outside, go work out. I don't have any family here. I'm I, I stay up here all night. Oh, man, that's awesome. Strap. One more thing before you go. Just give us the 30-second elevator pitch. So you're at UAB. You are in, like, the direct center of Power 5 SEC country. Right. Give us the pitch to the fans of Birmingham, Alabama, and the recruits all over the country. Why root for UAB? Why come to UAB? Why pack the hell out of Protective Stadium this fall? Uh, Well, uh, the first standpoint from uh, people in the city, I think, I don't think they understand the power of a successful college football program in your city. The amount of money that's going to come in this city, the amount of to having something to do, having your kids grow up and, and love something, a part of your city. This city has a lot of culture, has a lot of uh, has a lot of tradition, has a lot of history. I think having power in your city and power where you're from, having a successful something to come home to all the time is very powerful. And not having to drive an hour away that take pride in something. But having something in your backyard is really powerful. From a recruit standpoint, I think um, stepping into a situation where you can build something and your head coach's most important thing is to see you go be a professional in life. That's either football or as a man. I think that's really important. And your position coach, plan for me, I want guys to go play in the NFL. If you don't want to play in the NFL or graduate, I don't want you to come play for me. So I look for NFL guys, and I'm going to do everything in my power to, to push you to that limit. Those same NFL guys that I coached or played with, those same guys I work out in offseason. You're not just going to get a coach from me. You're going to get a trainer. So I think that's one thing I tell those guys I recruit. You're going to get a guy that's going to go out there and can step and do all those drills and change your body, your fun- your function, and things like that. I'm not a guy that's going to tell you to go play cover three and teach you how I seen it on YouTube. I can really go out there and show you how to do it 
Um, and everything, everything, every place you want to go, I feel that or I've been. So I can help you get there. Big time. Love it. Yes, sir. Strap. Secondary hey, Mer- coach. I'm being, a, be, I'm being a burrow next week, man. I got to get one of them sandwiches, man. Come come see me, brother. I'll take care of you. You know yeah. that. Man, I need <laughs> one of them too, Jeff. Most Anytime. definitely. Come, come down to the burrow. Strap. <laughs> Kenneth Gilstrap, DB coach, special teams coordinator, UAB. Dude is a great player. He's obviously a great coach. We know him and love him. Great dude. Love you, man. Proud of you. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate y'all, man. Jeff. He saw another coach sold me. I mean, yeah. Here's the deal, though. We know, like, we know Strap was with some of them guys at Middle that we know turned into NFL guys and great NFL guys. Yeah. So the eye is there, hundred percent. And that's what I loved the the story of of him. You know, learning through the ranks with you know yeah. Coach Ellis and those guys, and learning the traits of what to look for. So. There's no doubt. I mean, he he's he's the next big you know up and coming coach in the group of five. Um, hopefully, eventually he gets a D coordinator position and and as high as he wants to go. But couldn't be prouder of Strap. And I'm excited to watch that secondary down in down in Birmingham this year. And I think I think that defense, like you said, it's going to be really really good. And then you tag along Dilfer's offense, you might be might be able to do some damage in the American right away. Yeah. Well, they're kind of a. Uh... I mean, I don't hear anybody really talking about UAB. And, I mean, they were one of the top teams in Conference USA. For sure. For the last, you know, since they got their team back. Um, it's a new staff. There's a lot of excitement there. Um, we'll see. But I would not sleep on UAB. I mean, they can – they're going to be a problem for somebody. That's for sure. No doubt. No doubt about it. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um you can also go on YouTube. We just had our Conference USA preview show. That is live and up-to-date on YouTube right now, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. If you like the Group of Five Guys, we need your help. Follow us on all the social media platforms at Group of Five Guys. Go to groupoffiveguys.com. Get you some Group of Five Guys swag. Go to YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your best podcast. Subscribe to the show. Give us a five-star rating and review. Tell your friends and family all about us. That's all we got for you guys tonight. We'll catch you next week with Maction Preview and plenty more. We're out of here.